My talk is going to be very broad, so uh, let's go ahead and get started with that. Um, some of the manure considerations is, uh, of course, it's a very uh, uh, complex kind of system. You have lots of different animal sources, and even for a particular animal source like swine or, or uh, cattle or whatever, you'll have different types of operations, and that's going to affect the manure and the manure quality you're dealing with. Even within a, a, a particular operation, you have a number of management options that you need to think about and that will affect manure, uh, uh, both the, the quality and, and some of the processes that are going to go on in the manure. So, you know, of course, everybody's saying, well, is it a resource or a waste? Um, it really does depend upon where you're coming from. I know a number of uh, farmers in the southeast uh, United States, nutrients are an issue. They got to get rid of them, so they always think of it as, as more of a waste. Here in the, the central United States, my gosh, it's a resource. You know, there's some real value to that manure out there. So, some of the manure is issues that uh, that we deal with, of course, uh, nutrient loss, both runoff and, and volatilization. Volatilization is, you know, the, the loss by gas. Of course, ammonia is the one thing that you comes comes to uh, comes to mind right away. Greenhouse gas emissions. You have uh, methane and CO2 and nitrous oxide can be released during various aspects of manure handling and application. Odor is a big one. Uh, you know, if it wasn't for the odor, I don't think a whole lot of folks would care too much about what we're doing with the manure. But that's where it impacts a lot of folks that are that are not involved in ag operations. Other issues: uh, pathogens with pharmaceuticals. There's certainly uh, an interaction between uh, you know the pathogens and manure, uh, even bringing animals to a slaughter plant. You know if they have dirty hides and whatnot, there's chances that there'll be more pathogens on those organisms on the on the cattle, and that goes into the slaughter plant and can affect their operations. But pathogens are also an issue in that you know you worry about uh, application to fields. If the manure hasn't been treated <coughs> properly, uh, treated long enough, or or been managed in a certain way, you could have you could have some pathogens uh, leaving operations. Uh, pharmaceuticals, of course, are, are a, a new kind of emerging issue with with manure. You know, we uh, we f uh, give the animals uh, antibiotics uh, to help them uh, uh, survive and to, to grow better. And certainly, people <laughs> we ingest a whole lot of antibiotics and and things like that, and we have to understand maybe where these things are going and how they uh, may uh, build up or not build up in the soils. Also insects is, a, is another major issue with, with manure. Uh, certain uh, uh, types of species love to uh, find the right mix of manure and, and uh, soil or manure and uh, bedding and you can suddenly have an insect issue that not only affects your operation and perhaps the way you're uh, uh, animals are, are feeding or not feeding if the insects are really biting badly, but can also affect uh, neighbors. So microbes, um, and this is kind of the central part of my talk, are involved in all these different aspects. Certainly the microbes are involved in nutrient losses and in, in taking uh, the nutrients that are in the organic matter and converting them to forms that may leave, leave the farm operations uh, more easily. Greenhouse gas emissions as bacteria break down the manure, they're going to be producing CO2 and methane and other types of gases. Odors, the same sort of way. You've got ba bacteria that are involved uh, in manure stockpiles, in waste lagoons, wherever you're, you're dealing with uh, the manure or the waste from uh, an operation, there's going to be bacteria that are doing all sorts of interesting things. Pathogens, of course, are bacteria, or for the most part. There are some other microbes that we're worried about, but I kind of grouped them all together. Pharmaceuticals, uh, well, there's this interaction. You're going to hear a lot more about it in the talks uh, from, from Lisa and John, where there's this growing concern about pharmaceuticals that get into the soil. Maybe they're affecting bacteria and making superbugs. Uh, certainly, there's the fear of that out there. And what we need is really good science and uh, good research to, to tell us uh, what is really going on out there and uh, what are some of the best management practices to make sure that we don't cause a, an issue. Insects are also, there's an insect microbe kind of interaction 
a lot of these insects, they're uh, 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 larval stages. They're actively out there eating the microbes that are in the manure. Uh, hay rings in, the, in fields uh, are a real good habitat for uh, certain fly species. Thanks. That looks good. Or for fly species, and so you can suddenly have uh, you know biting flies coming out of uh, areas where there's manure, and uh, uh, and they're related to the the types of bacteria that are there. That's what they feed on. Everybody here, all right? You have a mic. For you. Yeah. Am I speaking loud enough for everyone? Okay. Thanks. So what is manure? You know, it's it's really varied, and that's why there's lots of different folks doing research on manure. We're doing different aspects, you know. Some focus on swine manures, some on poultry manures, turkey manures, it's, it's all over the place. But what is it? Mainly water, organic matter. Organic matter can come in lots of different forms. There's the, the feed that passes through the animal. Uh, feathers and hair, even the slough from the, in, the intestines of animals, you'll see that coming out in the manure. Bedding, insects, microbes. Simple organics, just the material that, uh, for, for instance, in cattle, you'll have the fermentation going on inside the animal. And when it excretes out the manure, some of those fermentation products, those odor products, are there already. Very simple organics, but it's all part of the mix. Uh, certainly in cattle feedlots, you can have a certain amount of uh, soil. You know, when you're scraping the pens, it's not all 100% manure. There's a certain amount of soil that gets in there. So that's all mixed in. And then the, the real benefit, uh, organic matter, yes, is, is very beneficial, but also the real benefit where we get it is, is the inorganic nutrients. That's what, uh, what makes it worth keeping around and, and, and utilizing. So the way I study manure is I like to think of it as an ecosystem. You've got these bacteria in it. Bacteria are going to be doing lots of different things, and it's really going to depend on what's around. Oxygen is really the key driver in these in the systems. You know, is oxygen available? Like on a cattle feedlot surface, you're going to have more oxygen around. You're going to have more aerobic breakdown of the, of the manure. Down, uh, uh, say, in a manure pit, a uh, deep pit with swine operations, there's not a whole lot of oxygen there, so you're going to have a whole different type of metabolism going on with these, these bacteria. Um, water also plays an important role in, in oxygen availability and whether uh, bacteria may be doing something, particularly on a feedlot surface. You can have it so dry on a feedlot that it's just it won't happen. You know, the manure dries out, it just, it just stays. But uh, uh, certainly in a, in a pit uh, or a lagoon or something where you have plenty of water, it's going to drive it the opposite way where you're going to have a whole lot less uh, oxygen available. One other thing to think about when I think about uh, microbes, is what are they eating? Certainly there are plenty of different kinds of substrates, the different foods that the bacteria will eat. And that food can be the organic matter itself, the undigested feed. It could be um, uh, the urea. Bacteria will break down the urea and, and get some energy from that, or even uh, say ammonia. If the conditions are right, they'll take the ammonia and use that as an energy source and, and convert it into nitrate. So, like I was saying, I like to think of these, these uh, systems in, in two ways, and oxygen being the important, the important player. So, when I talk about oxygen available systems, I call them aerobic, just like when you're out uh, exercising, you're going to be uh, utilizing oxygen for a little bit, but then if you keep exercising, you're going to go anaerobic. You've used up the oxygen around and you start making other kinds of uh, uh, products and and that's why your muscles ache. And certainly in these systems, I'm gonna, in the next uh, couple slides, talk about aerobic versus anaerobic types of systems. So um, if we take a look at organic matter, what, what happens to it in, uh, in an aerobic versus an anaerobic system? Well, we already talked about the different things, the, the feed, the animal, the stuff that's coming from animals. Uh, or the organic matter composition really does have an effect on these types of decomposition products that you'll see. So if it's aerobic, lots of oxygen around, you're going to have a complete breakdown as much as possible, where you have organic matter going to CO2, uh, nutrients, and water. 
anaerobic systems, of course, it doesn't quite go as far. It goes as far as it can. Um, you get some CO2 production, get nutrients. If it goes all the way that it can in an anaerobic system, methane is the final end product. And that's, uh, for instance, in uh, bi uh, digesters. If you're using a digester to, uh, uh, to, to generate methane gas for energy production, methane is what you're going after. Uh, you also get stuck at some levels where you get volatile organic compounds, or they call them VOC. Uh, those are the ones that are their odor compounds. Basically, uh, you've gotten a certain way down the decomposition route and you've just kind of gotten stuck. So, what can affect this? I mentioned in the, the previous slide, the, the composition of the manure, what the animals are eating. Uh, for instance, here you can see that uh, we got cattle, and it's a little hard to make out, but here you have, oh, probably on the left, cattle are, are eating more of a mix of uh, maybe some distiller's grains, or cattle on the right have a more high, higher forage uh, type of ration, um, typical of animals just coming in off the field. We know um, if you feed them different kinds of things, you'll get different kinds of manures coming off. So wet distiller's grains, they're high in nutrients and crude protein. We look at the manure, after that decomposition goes on, it's going to be higher in ammonia, and you're going to have other things like hydrogen sulfide, which could be produced since it's high in sulfur to begin with. Same thing with, uh, uh, it's probably not as, as uh, common as it once was, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, but if you look at dry rolled versus steam flaked corn, the feed that you're feeding them is going to be coming through them and the, the composition of the manure is going to be a little bit different. So in the dry roll corn, if, you, if it's not broken up into to smaller pieces, you're going to have much higher residual starch. If you look at that manure, over time it's going to have more volatile fatty acids coming from the starch fermentation. So it's going to have a little different odor, a little different smell to it. Looking at the, the different anaerobic pathways, these are the pathways where, okay, you're in an anaerobic environment, there's no oxygen around. You can look at uh, the composition of that manure. And for instance, you're looking at just proteins or carbohydrates that are in the manure. If you go through an initial first step hydrolysis, it takes those proteins and carbohydrates and makes them into simpler types of molecules like amino acids and the simple sugars. The amino acids can go through actually two different kinds of further fermentation and you end up with a whole bunch of different kinds of uh, odor compounds, volatile fatty acids, phenols, indoles, sulfides, diamines, things like putrazine and cadaverine, you know those got to stink based upon that. But um, so proteins, um, you can look at the decomposition products and you can say well what's coming through an animal? If you see some more of these kind of protein fermentation products and odor products, you can say, well, there seems to be a bit of excess protein coming through. With carbohydrates, you tend to get straight chain volatile fatty acids, very different kinds of odor compounds. It'll smell a whole lot different. So when we think about VOCs, VOCs, these volatile organic compounds, lots of different kinds of compounds, fatty acids and things like that, they have some kind of characteristic odors, like the acetic acid, which is a straight chain volatile fatty acid, that's vinegar. So if you're out in a feedlot and you smell something that smells like vinegar, you, tend, you might have a whole lot of acetic acid there. Other things, uh, other volatile fatty acids and other aromatic ring compounds smell more fecal. Sulfides, of course, are a rotten egg kind of smell. Very uh, the human nose is very sensitive to those. An interesting thing that uh, the microbes may help us with is if these compounds uh, end up in an aerobic environment, like they go to the surface, or they're in a, a, a like a, oh, uh, what's the name for that, aren't they? Uh, a biofilter on, say, a swine operation. Of course, those odors that are coming out of the, the pit go through an aerobic area, layer, and actually the bacteria in there can consume those odors. So what happens to nutrients and phosphorus? Well, phosphorus is very simple. It just gets kind of broken down into phosphate. Uh, it usually becomes bound to particles and then would wash off or, uh, or leave as runoff. 
Not, no, uh, luckily there's no volatile forms of phosphorus that we have to worry about. Nitrogen is a lot more complicated. You have organic nitrogen and ammonia in an aerobic environment. You can have eventually nitrate forming. And uh, some of the ammonia around, if it's an aerobic environment, you can also have it uh, uh, going to ammonia gas and you can have it leaving the system that way. Anaerobically, you tend to get more of the ammonia kind of hanging out and that can leach or run out, run out of the system. Nitrate, if it finds its way there, will end up being, getting converted to nitrogen gas and nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide is one of those potent greenhouse gases that people worry about. So other roles for microbes in these systems. Um, you can affect, uh, the manure affects the nutrient organic matter in groundwater. This is a system where we had a, a, a leaky holding pond and uh, the values here, uh, you have water moving through, through the system this way, and of course these two come out the same, but the first value here is nitrate and ammonia. So you have a lot of ammonia as it comes off of the, this leaking system in the groundwater. And eventually the ammonia goes away, but the nitrate builds up. And that kind of illustrates that whole conversion of the ammonia to the nitrate. So these are some bacteria that are, that are uh, working in the, the groundwater. Other roles that you'll hear quite a bit more about is looking at pathogens and antibiotic resistance. Uh, this is some, some bacteria that are grown on a plate and each of those little white discs has some antibiotic in it and you can tell by how big that clear field is how susceptible the bacteria is to that antibiotic. So if it says a small clearing, it's not very susceptible. If it has a big clearing, it's very susceptible. And this is one way that we can isolate and study the bacteria uh, maybe from manures and other manure impacted environments. Pharmaceuticals is also a big issue and we just did a, a, a study uh, looking at vegetative treatment areas to see whether pharmaceutical compounds are building up or going away. Certainly in these systems there, there are helpful bacteria that will help break down these compounds and so we were interested in those guys. So is it a resource or waste? I think there's many benefits uh, to soil health and sustainable crop production with manure application. You get a lot more than, than just putting down a mineral fertilizer. You get that organic matter in there. You get nutrients, but not only the, the, the macronutrients, but the micronutrients that, that are also needed. Plus, uh, in the, the, the manure, I think there's some beneficial microorganisms. They can help break down crop residues, things like that. I think the key is, is you gotta manage the environmental issues. Uh, make the best decisions about how to manage your manure in order to reap the benefits of that, uh, uh, of that uh, the, the manure itself.